Uh, okay. So to anyone watching, this is Tim Briffer. He's a musician from London. And um, he, uh, he has a band called My Drug Help. And he, um, he has a brilliant song called uh, Living La Vida Lockdown, which is an anti-lockdown song, I guess. Our life is sweet. It's like there's no tomorrow. Ever since they put me on the furlough Sleep until late while still getting most of my wages Cause everything's shut, you won't believe how much we're saving I love the lockdown, we're living la vida lockdown I love the lockdown, we're living la vida lockdown Hey! Uh, I just wanted to talk to different people to get their different views and experiences of what was going on just just for a laugh really mainly for a laugh and um just helps you feel a bit more sane and connect with other people so do, do you want to like go, go back to like april may and june and like tell me what was going through your head at the time because i think depending on the person it's com it's very very different isn't it april may june of last year you mean yeah um Mar you know march april when it started, you mean the whole thing? When the whole thing started, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think initially, I thought it was real. Well, it is real. And I mostly took it on face value. Um, but very quickly, I mean, almost immediately, I thought, well, this is ripe for exploitation at the very least. And then the more I looked into it, the more I saw that the numbers didn't add up. And we were being lied to. And then when the sort of things like the, the lockdown came in and the emergency powers came in, and I was like, well, fingers crossed they're not lying to us, they're not going to abuse this. Um, but I was very skeptical. I thought, well, they could if they want. It's a bit like the, when 9-11 when happened. You sort mm -hmm. of think, well, okay, it's happened, and it's, you know. But you immediately go, they can easily exploit this. And they did, of course. And so I thought, well, they could exploit it. The other fear was that it was engineered. And mm -hmm. so I seemed to me there were sort of three sort of basic scenarios. One, that it was a naturally occurring virus and they were doing their best to deal with it. Two, it was a naturally occurring virus and they were sort of, they might exploit it to implement various agendas. And three, the most terrifying scenario is that it was deliberately released and the whole thing is going to be, you know, a plan to basically implement, you know, a, a, a sinister agenda. And I wasn't sure which it was out of those three, but I quickly got onto either two or three, and I thought actually it's most likely three now, and that's what I think we've we've got. I think it's most likely deliberately released, but it's hard, hard to say for sure. But there's a ton of evidence to suggest that it was, and so it's very worrying, really, because it's sort of that's the one I feared, and then that means that oh shit, it's not them just being incompetent or taking advantage. It's like we're in, we're you know they've got all their fucking chess moves worked out. They know what we're going to do next. But I, I got to that point in about two. months, months i think from the beginning probably uh, i also called out pretty much everything that happened from because i did podcasts back then so you've got a podcast have you as well you've got a podcast uh... yeah i i did one i did one well we did one me and a friend called the unlistenable podcast presents the corona diaries mm -hmm. and we started it i think about a few days before the lockdown we started it and then so we documented the whole thing just for me me and this friend who's a filmmaker and we just basically sort of commented on what was going on, what we were observing. At the beginning, it was kind of funny. We kind of laughed at it and we kind of had this kind of black humour about it. Like, you know, because the, the numbers at that point, I mean, the official numbers we had going back from Lombardy, when we had the first sort of stuff happening in Italy, you know, they were sort of saying sort of 7% of people are going to die. And, you know, it looked on the face of it like that was happening. But, you know, and I was like, shit, well, that's the numbers, fuck. And then gradually, as it sort of continues, that, oh, OK, well, it's not going to be 7%. And then gradually, I broke it down. I, I looked at things every day and studied them. And then I looked at the fact that, for example, Iran had, uh, it hit Iran simultaneously as it, at the same time it hit Italy. And I noticed that the numbers in Italy went up, but Iran didn't. I thought, well, that's interesting, because I was expecting it to go exponential. And I was expecting it to go exponential in other places. And then I started realizing it didn't. And I thought, well, why hasn't it, hasn't it gone up in Iran? And then I thought, ah, their seasons are different. They're hot. It's going, getting hotter. And I noticed all the countries where it was flat, the levels of the numbers are flat, were the hot countries. So then I'm thinking, well, okay, so heat must affect either heat or vitamin D and sunlight. And so I started doing, connecting the dots myself. And so I quickly realized, you know, they're not telling us the full story. It's very obvious. You can quickly work out. It's not hitting the young people. It's, you know, it's not hitting hot climates. It's seasonal. 
you know, mm. and so like, well, they're not talking about this. And so I thought, this is, if I could figure this out, you know, what they, they must have figured this out. Mm. It's very easy to see. So I kind of realized they were lying to us. And, you know, this is like, why are they telling us the truth? And why are they keep on moving the goalpost? You know, the three weeks flat occurred, and it suddenly became, well, now we need the, the Nightingale hospitals. We need, we need masks. We haven't got enough masks. Well, I bought some masks on eBay myself. They were available. So that I knew they were lying about that. <laughs> Lots of things. Because I started off paranoid, like I say. So I wasn't one of these guys who just thought, said, no, I actually... I disinfected everything. I did all the things for about really? three weeks. In mm-hmm. fact, before anyone else was doing it. Yeah, I, I took it seriously. The precautionary principle. I believe in it. You know, sensible at that point. If you don't know what you're dealing with, fucking take care. Mm. But very soon I thought, hang on, hang on. It's not nearly as dangerous. You also had the Diamond Princess, you know, where it didn't go, you know, this, this cruise line, I don't know if you remember it, but it's full of old people. And, and there's an outbreak in February, of, I think, of 2020. And yet only about 1% died. And they're all over, you know, all old codgers and dying of other things. And you think, well, it didn't, most of them didn't get it. Even the ones who did get it, only a small percentage died. So it's like, well, okay, it's not nearly as dangerous as they're saying, because that's a Petri dish, basically. Mm. And so I just connected the dots and just thought, right, right, this is utter bullshit. Mm-hmm. And, and, what, um... uh, and, I, you know, and it's also obvious how to help people, because, you know, we knew that vitamin D was a brilliant protector. Mm-hmm. And then I researched that, and it's like, you know, um, it's brilliant for respiratory conditions and, and, and these kinds of things. Uh, really effective. It's like 75% effective at stopping you getting it and preventing you from dying if you do get it. Well, I figured that out very early on. Mm-hmm. So they would know this. They've got 35 members in SAGE, all kind of big experts. And I thought, well, why, why are they telling you to stay indoors, the one mm-hmm. place you don't get vitamin D? Why mm-hmm. are they telling you to not go into gyms or exercise? It's pretty much everything. And why are they putting you into confined spaces? When we knew that out of doors, it you know, can get passed on, which is another reason why it didn't go, go massive in, in Africa and in India and these countries, where they also, I assumed it would do, and it didn't. And it only went, it only sort of spread in sort of the colder climates. So, so it's very easy to figure this out if you did a, even a bit of research. So, I, you know, bearing in mind they have all their top experts, I'd say, mm-hmm. didn't figure out. And it's like, am I a genius? You know, I kind of think, well, I don't really think so, considering I've never even got an O level in fucking science. I think it's more likely they're fucking lying through their fucking teeth. That's why. So what re- what resources were you using? And I still do. Yeah, what resources were you using in those early days to kind of get your statistics and stuff? My head, Worldometer, World World Worldometer, the the, the 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 statistics on Worldometer. They give you a daily breakdown of all the cases and deaths. Right. And uh, and so you could just see it. You just looked at where it's where it's taking off and where it wasn't taking off, and mm. it just followed the, the you know wherever it was in a summer period went down. It's like we went down last summer in England. You know, deaths were down to sort of twenty a day before the vaccine, lower than now. Mm-hmm. And like, well, what what what's happening here? Well, hey, it's summer. You know, what happens in summer? Flu goes away, doesn't it, kids? You know, we kind of know that. You don't really need fucking degree in it, fucking to know this, because we all know it from fucking five years old. Mm. You know, but all that stuff, fucking brain. That stuff has got quite confused because you you know the asymptomatic. Yeah, yeah. Um, But you know the asymptomatic spread thing. Yeah, the bollocks. Yeah. Well, that that's the thing that really gets me because I I I thought that was I thought that was common sense, but but everyone has taken that on as the new. Um, this new thing where you don't have symptoms, you still got to still get it. Yeah, and then and then you get it, but don't have symptoms. Symptoms. So something's a bit odd there. And even if it's true, it doesn't really matter, does it? Hmm. <laughs> I mean, if you haven't got symptoms, it's not very serious. So, so like, great. And it's also like, if you haven't got symptoms, and none of it makes fucking sense, for one. Hmm. And then it, unless you look into how they're actually testing for it and how they, they diagnose a case. And then you go, oh, I see. They, they do this thing where the more you look for, you know, dead uh, DNA of the fucking virus, you'll eventually, if you ramp it up, you'll eventually find fucking a fragment of it in just about anybody. Mm. And so it's clearly the tests of the, and it's not that they're passing on, it's that the fucking tests don't fucking work. They can find fragments of fucking, you know, tuberculosis, the bubonic plague will be in there somewhere. You know, mm. it's kind of like, um, it's the test that's the problem. Yeah, the, so the, it's a myth. And the, the biggest, another thing was that, you know, I, I was also just looking at the studies, you know, the, the biggest ever study on asymptomatic spread ever conducted in China on 10 million people concluded it was a myth. Mm. Now that was goes back into the summer year they did this huge colossal study and mm. so there's no evidence of it and that's mm. the biggest ever study randomized study into asymptomatic spread i thought okay great that's going to blow the lid off this whole thing yeah hey, don't worry folks they got it wrong the test mm. of the problem and everyone fucking ignored it 
So again, I, I didn't do any massive research. You just fucking look at it. You just look into it. Google, you know, and you'll find, you know, asymptomatic spread, the China study. Same with masks, you know, you just fucking Google it. You'll find there's 40 published studies showing that masks do fuck all. It's all out there. Mm-hmm. But no one ever fucking does it. They just switch on the TV. Well, the, the funny thing is, it seems like, because there's a few, been a few debates I've had on Facebook with people who are quite smart. And and when I say this stuff, they, they come back with the opposite and they find and, and, they, and they make kind of arguments that can kind of sound like they're making sense to debunk me. Yeah. And then they and then they, they stuff like, say, Reuters. And um, yeah, they baffle me with bullshit. I, know, I come from a family of doctors. I've been around doctors and science all my life. It doesn't mean that they have fucking common sense. And it doesn't mean that they don't have biases and aren't subject to all the fucking, you know, bullshit that any, any other human is. They just studied a fucking, they got through a medical exam for three years. They learned some stuff. You know, it doesn't mean that, you know, they can't, they, they will still selectively have, you know, jump to conclusions and go with their biases and group think. They, in fact, they're especially prone to group think because if, if, if doctors go against the narrative and, you know, they get ostracized. So there's an immense pressure for them to follow what everyone else is following. Um, mm. And so they selectively ignore any study that doesn't fit with theirs. So I'll mention the Chinese one. They go, oh, well, hey, you said, it's Chinese, and they'll ignore it. Well, it's like, well, hang on, have you looked into that? You, you know, you just made an assertion there without any evidence whatsoever that it's bullshit. Mm. Um, and they do this all the time. You know, I could show you 40 studies right off the top, you know, right now. I could show, probably get another one, but 40 right away that are published medical studies showing that masks don't work. Um, and I can, I've shown them to people, and they'll, they're, it's on a site. They've all got links to the original papers, published peer-reviewed papers, and they won't look at them because the site that publishes them has a name called Theocracy News, and they go, um, is it Theocracy News? Yeah, I think something like that. They look at this. It's a, it's a, it's a, uh, you saw that on YouTube, or you saw that on the internet. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you stupid boy. And it's like, you haven't fucking even looked at the fucking papers. You just go look at that and you go, ah, I can dismiss it by claiming it's not a serious publication. But mm-hmm. it links to serious publication. So what's the fucking problem? Why? So like, what kind of scientists would do that? You know, they won't even look at the fucking research you give them. And then they'll quote something that they saw on the BBC as if that's somehow now the only fucking authority. But there's no scientific basis to it. Like, if you look into Mars, ask them for their evidence. Ask them what they've got. You'll find mm. they've got jack shit. They've got like one study that was in the fucking Lancet that if you, the moment you break it down, even people, it's not peer reviewed. And even the people who published the fucking study said, well, they didn't distinguish between, they also used hand sanitizers and social distancing. So they couldn't really be sure what was the masks and what was something else. It's like, that's not a fucking study. That's, a, that's like a you know, schoolboy scientific paper. It's absolute junk science. Mm. And they don't look into this. And they, they'll, they'll baffle you with this crap. And you'll be sitting there going, kind of thinking that they know what they're talking about because they'll use you know, terms that you won't understand. But it doesn't mean they're right. Yeah, yeah. Um- I, so, so you actually think it was a real virus? You, you, because I personally do, but I know that I know the theories that say otherwise. You know, and all this, I'm aware of that. But I, I also know my limitations. I'm not enough of a scientist to really be argue that to argue that out. I'm not a scientist at all, but I don't have enough knowledge to really sort of say, you know, you know, the idea that there's no such thing as a virus and whatever some people say, and and you know, they've never isolated COVID and whatever. It's like you know, maybe that's true. I really don't know, but that's out of my fucking my expertise by so far I just, I just don't get involved in it you know it's like mm-hmm. maybe you know possibly but i kind of stick to what i do know and what i do think and, and using my common sense and i've done a ton of reading and my my personal thing is that i know people who've had it they've all sort of said that the symptoms are very odd you know like losing your taste and smell and a few things and a lot of them are quite you know conspiracy minded it's like they're not making it up to me because they're friends of mine and i know you know they're not they've got nothing to gain from sort of lying so something's going on uh, that they're getting but you know uh, yeah i mean it's you know I, I personally think it's more likely plus we know the research from the wuhan lab we know going back to 2015 there's a there's a paper in nature magazine which where, where they were doing gain of function research into splicing uh sars with the coronavirus a bat um from a bat uh with and they were trying to actually sort of extend it to humans this thing they were splicing this all together this was carrying on carried out in the wuhan lab a mile and a half from where it was found it seems to me that everything kind of points to the fact it's probably real um, and probably released somehow. That's my my kind of you know. Yeah, I, I, I've I, I've heard that, but um, the, the the reason why I'm dubious as to whether it exists is because I think the the mortality rate is about ninety nine point 
sorry, the recovery rate is 99.7 or something like that. Based on the Office of National Statistics website, it's like, yeah, it's, it's and, and for anyone under 70, it's like 99.99 yeah, or something. Nothing, yeah. So if, if you, that's, if you're if healthy under 70. I'm sorry. If you're healthy under 70, it's you, you, your likelihood of dying is about the same as um, dying of, of in a fire. Something like that. Yeah. It's about the same as flu and lower than flu, I think. For it. Over 65 with comorbidities, yeah, it can go up a lot. But yeah, if you're under that, it's, it's about the same as flu. I think. That, 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 see, that, it just, that was the reason it indicates to me that it doesn't exist. Because if why would they bother to release something if it had such a low mortality rate? Mortality. I, I, because it's actually not that easy to create a, 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 a virus in the lab that, that will actually do what you want it to do. It's not that simple. I mean, which is why they spend years doing it, in a way, because you don't really know how it's going to behave in the real world. It's sort of, you know, people have natural immunity. You don't really know how it's going to work unless you test it on millions of people. You don't really know who it's going to hit. You can sort of guess. But um, I think they just get it right. You know, it's not that easy. I mean, I think if it was easy, we'd have been dealing with bio-warfare all the time. You know, it's... I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's as easy as they think. And, and, you know, you really don't know how it's going to play out in the real world until you release it. And I think what well, probably my, my suspicion is that they wished, wished it was more virulent and they probably wished it hit kids because that would have, been, would have suited them better, frankly. Um, mm-hmm. And they probably went, oh, damn, it's not nearly as bad as we thought. <laughs> uh, that's, that's my suspicion. You know, they, get, they, they don't get everything right. Yeah, it, it's, um, it's, very com- it's very confusing, isn't it? And... Um... What annoys me is because it's confusing, it's pe- people are never going to come to a consensus on it. So I would, I, I would have thought by now there would have been some consensus that, that there was some kind of a scam. But all of my friends who are really smart ha- haven't changed their mind at all. Um, really? And, and, they give, and they just get, I just get so much shit for it. Um, yeah. Which, which is the other thing, because I, I just feel like me and you and, and the other people who are kind of fighting for the, our freedoms... All we're doing is trying to fight for other people's freedoms, and, and in return, we get, we just get all this shit. Do you know what I mean? It's it's like it. I know. What, I know. what do they, what do like, they think? Know, yeah, we don't get anything out of it. I get, I get <laughs> abuse. You think they'd ask themselves what they think we're getting out of it? But it's, it's, it takes fucking tons of time. I fucking hate doing it. I'd much rather be fucking singing songs about pulling women in bars, you know, and and going out <laughs> and pulling women in bars. There's a million things I'd rather be fucking doing. Mm-hmm. Then fucking researching fucking scientific papers on fucking Mars through some guy on the internet that he's talking bullshit. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm mad, which I don't know why the fuck I do because I'm starting to fucking loathe most of them. But I sort of, you know, for some reason, I feel like I actually, you know, there are good people out there and I don't want them to die. And I actually, mm. I don't want them to be turned into fucking slaves to the fucking cabal, you know. So I feel this moral obligation to fucking wake people up. But yeah. They're, they're fucking pricks these people a lot of them they really and they're, they're not as smart as they think they are that's mm. a real thing that you've got to be careful with it with intellectuals and people who've got degrees it doesn't mean they're fucking smart it means that they're good at l- retaining knowledge and good at l- repeating and regurgitating what they've been taught in university it doesn't mean they've got any fucking common sense like i said i grew up in a family of doctors my uncle's a doctor my both my parents are doctors my sister's a doctor my brother's big in the it's other doctors and other kids. <laughs> They're always saying, oh, God, this guy's completely incompetent. He's completely fucked up. I know about this. And I met them. I've hung out with them. Like loads of these doctors. They're fucking, some of them are utterly stupid. Just because they, all they've done is they passed a fucking exam. Doesn't make them suddenly wise up. There's not many of them in, in that walk life. So they follow each other. And the moment that the, the crowd changes, they'll change with that. They're just as sheep-like as anyone else. Mm. But they love to, they love to sort of, Put on this like, oh, I work as I work at the front line. I'm a doctor, you know. I know, uh, you know, <laughs> I know all about this. But uh, yeah, you you don't actually. Like honestly, I've spoken to doctors who hadn't even heard of Dr. Fauci, hadn't even heard of him. They didn't know the first thing about the statistics. They thought that one percent of people died from it. And I was like, it's not one percent. It's at best naught point one, or maybe naught point two. I think was the, as the official figure as well from the CDC. Naught point two, I think, at one point. And I was quoted 1%. That's one in 100. It's like, no, it's nearly like one in 1,000. That's quite important. Mm. And they didn't know that. You know, I, I spoke to another doctor who thought kids g- got it and spread it around. And, you know, no, they don't. There's no evidence. Like, Sweden kept its schools open the whole time. Not one single child died. 
1.7 million children in Sweden. Not one of them died of it. And these are like really, really trained people I'm talking about here. They didn't know the first fucking thing. And because I called them out on it, they kind of, they were like, well, yeah, I don't know about that again. But it's, yeah, they, they, they talk a lot of shit, a lot of these people. Mm. So don't be baffled by them and, and don't buy into it just because they say they're a doctor. It doesn't mean they know anything. Mm. The, the, the thing that is... Shipman um, is a doctor. Mengele is a doctor. Um, what's on my mind at the moment is 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 even though I've been kind of going back and forth in a kind of, kind of antagonistic thing with people for a while, I'm wondering whether to change that approach and become more empathetic because like there w- there was a time in my life where I thought the twin towers were were fell down due to jet fuel, you know. So I was I was yeah I was I was a sheep up until you know in a lot of things and probably still am a sheep about a lot of things, uh, but certainly I didn't realize nine eleven was a scam until about 2008. Yeah, but, 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 but when you were faced with the evidence, you changed your mind, yeah? It took a so while, you though, looking it, at the evidence. It, it, took about, yeah. it took about six six months of looking at the evidence, and, and you know, I just had a lot of free time at university, so, but, you know, if, if I was somebody who, who was a lot busier and, I, and had a bit, a bit you yeah. know, more successful, and uh, then I probably wouldn't have woken up. And, I, and that's why I see a lot of my friends who are really successful and they have families, they're, they're, completely, yeah. as, they're completely asleep. Yeah, um, and I don't know how to approach it anymore. I mean, you got a point there. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I do, I do know what you mean in that. If you have got the luxury to to research this stuff, you know, they haven't all got that. I, I do understand. I do agree with you on that as well. I think it really depends on the person because some will talk to you in, on on a, a respectful manner. Say, I'll always try to reason with them because my my main intention is to fucking get them to understand what's going on because we all need to be in this together we need to fucking fucking realize what we're up against Mm -hmm. so i don't want to just start wars and just try to prove i'm right and they're wrong it's not that's not my fucking intention i want them to understand and then for them to help spread the word as well Mm -hmm. so i never do that so it really depends on the person because some people talk down to you and some people actually talk to you with respect if they talk to you with respect you know that's then they're more, more likely to be open to it anyway, you know. And, and you know, mm. I'm fine with those people. If they if they don't agree with me, that's fine. But at least have a dialogue and don't and you know properly let's debate the evidence, not just tell me I don't know what I'm talking about or dismiss it because it's not on the, in the Guardian, you know that kind of stuff. I go well, fuck you then. In that case, you're a fucking idiot, frankly, if you're that stupid. But you know, yeah, I mean, I think you've got to be you've got to you got to reason with them and be be respectful. But like I say, if they're not respectful back, it changes. Then then it changes. But go in there and actually, you know, be sympathetic and do all that. Yeah, that's initially, definitely, definitely. Yeah, I, I guess, um, I guess it's because, it's because mo- most of these debates are happening on Facebook, and my, my initial post on Facebook probably sounds antagonistic. But it's only because I'm just so like, I'm, you know, it's like a year and a half, and I'm like, fucking hell, guys, when is this going to fucking end? And I know, I, and I then agree, yeah. like, I, I just, I. It, it's it's a thing, isn't it? After a year and a half, and they haven't. They, it's not like in when I was a kid. There's this, this whole sort of thing. You have to get information, you had to go to the fucking library. You quite a, quite often had to order a book, and it would take a month to arrive. You know, if they could even get the book that you were after. Uh, and now, yeah, and then they, so the internet comes along. And you think, oh my god, it's going to change everything. You've got access to all. You can prove everything scientifically. Any at the touch of a fucking finger, you can find the information on some article that you read years ago. You can find it. You know, this is going to really make the truth going to come out. And it didn't. And that's what's so fucking frustrating. It's like, you've got fucking Google, mate. You've got, I can send you the link and you still, you won't even look at them. And that, that, that's when I kind of really despair of, of people, really. Because it's like, you know, if they're ignorant and they don't, you haven't seen the facts, fair enough. You know, they've got a reason for having their opinion. But when you present them with the evidence, when you show them these studies and you explain to them why a mask doesn't work, you just say, well, look at the holes in them. You know, it's a thousandth of the width. Uh, a viral virus is a thousand the width of the holes in the in the mask. How the hell is that going to work? Look at all these studies, you know, and they still just ignore you and go back to whatever. It's like then, like, then I lose all respect. Then I go, I kind of despair of mankind because I think, fuck, we're fucked. Mm. Yeah, I, <laughs> you, know, uh... you know, I don't. I, but the ones who are open minded, I'm fine with. I, I had a debate just earlier with with a guy who's respectful on the thread. I started. He, you know, he's, I think he's a doctor. And he was nice to us, you know. He, he said we were wrong about various things. I he I think he was completely wrong. But he he we had a he's respectful, you know. And it's like okay, I, I'm fine with that. Let's have a debate now, you know. And I'll t- I've been talking to him completely civilly about it. I, I'm not going to attack him at all, you know. That's fine by my book. But these people who just dismiss you and don't look at the evidence and 
you know, and then tell everyone else, oh, you're an idiot for not, you know, you COVID idiot and whatever. It's really hard to respect them after a while, you know. Yeah. They um, are, are the problem. I hate to there, there, there are like a few little confusing things about all this, which, for example, I had a close friend who had long COVID, right? Yeah. And, and she's not the type to lie about stuff. And um, she was posting that she, she was affected by this for months and months. And it's little things like that that confuse me because I'm like, what the hell is long COVID? And, and, and I'm not going to tell someone that you, that you didn't. It's defined as being any symptoms that linger for more than four weeks, right? So they, they, when they say one in five or whatever had long COVID, well, most people think that means they've got this thing that's going to last for years. But actually, it means it lasts more than four weeks. Well, the virus itself will last for about two weeks. So to linger for another two weeks is actually pretty common with, the, with, with any flu. It's not that uh, unusual. So, so when they talk about long COVID, or whatever, a lot of them is, is nothing more than just lingering flu. But in your case of your friend, where you got, you know, it's really lasting a long time. Well, that's also similar to post-viral syndrome. Again, that exists anyway. That's mm -hmm. a known thing. It's not exclusive to COVID. Uh, I, I, it's unfortunate for your friend. There are things they can, she can probably do to help. I mean, you know, even ivermectin, things that are, are, are renowned mm. for helping. I've heard it you know, can help for long COVID. Um, vitamin D is actually what sorted me out for, for my things, vitamin D. You know, if you, if you get all that stuff right, you can improve it. But you know, I think it, it's real. I think these things are real. I think they just overstated. Mm. You know, they use as a weapon against you to shut you up. But what about long COVID then, you know? They're not interested in, in it. They're not interested in having a proper discussion with you. But it's a way of shutting you down. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, that's what I was to say about all this stuff. I think it's real. I think people get it. I think you should be sympathetic. I think should, we need to give them the, the proper information. Like I say, vitamin D is really effective. Hydroxychloroquine, ivermectin, these things are there. You know, so let's talk about them. Mm. I, you know? I get... And then that's when you realise they're kind of, they're, they're talking shit because the moment you bring it up, they change the subject. They're not interested in talking about vitamin D. So, well, if you really care, if you're a doctor who really cares, why aren't we talking about vitamin D? Why are you only talking about the facts? Why is that your only one? You know, so mm. then I start to doubt what kind of a human being they are, frankly. Mm. Are, you interested in, are you interested in helping the person or are you interested in improving that conspiracy theories are all nutters? What, is your, what are you trying to do here? Because mm. your obligation is to help the patient. Mm. You're not helping the patient. And, you, and do no harm. The Hippocratic Oath. Are you doing that by giving them a vaccine that hasn't been finished its safety trials? Mm -hmm. You know, you're not, you're not, you're not doing your fucking job. Mm. You know, so don't fucking blame me because I'm trying to actually do what's right mm. here. You know, and, and I'm skeptical about the government because they are breaking these things, so they are in the wrong. Very, very, very clearly, there's no two ways about it. Mm. They're recommending a treatment that hasn't finished its, its fucking safety trials. They've got no way of knowing what it does, and they're telling everyone that it's safe. They don't know it's safe. Mm. So anyone who says that, it's like, I, 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 you know, I'm like, wow, you know, sorry, but I, I don't need to be a scientist. I don't need anything to say that you are fucking wrong. You should not be doing that. And you know darn well. We know about thalidomide. We know about millions of things that have been caused terrible, terrible fucking tragedies as a result of reckless fucking being doled out by doctors and whatever. And yeah, I, I guess um, I'm, I, just based on the people that I know who are, are really set in their ways on this, compared to the so-called conspiracy theorists, it, it boils down to they have a worldview about, they think, well, if it, was, if it was really true that this was a scam or a, a conspiracy, uh, all these organizations wouldn't have gone along with it because wh why, would, why, yeah. would we, yeah. why would we just destroy ourselves like this? Because that's what we're doing, aren't we? As a country, we're destroying yeah. ourselves. Yeah. That's, I think you're right. You're absolutely right. That's what, that's, that's what they're really protecting. They're not protecting the patient. They're not protecting whatever. They're protecting their worldview because that's what, what you and I are doing. We're basically saying to them, your dad is a serial killer. It's that kind of analogy. Mm. You know, I mean, no one wants to be told that your dad was, you know, a serial killer, right? It's just like, no, 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 don't tell me. And, and anyone who ever has that sort of scenario where you find, oh, your dad's a, so you say, say a rapist, right? Which happens all the fucking time, right? Plenty mm. of dads are rapists. Um, no one wants their daddy they don't want to be told their, their, their world is fucking horrible. And so they go into denial. And so mm. that's really what, why they get so angry about this stuff. Because you are sort of saying to them that all their, their gods, all their, their daddy figures, all the people that are there to protect them are actually corrupt. They're actually the serial killer. It's the horror movie scenario where you find that, you know, the sheriff is actually the guy who's actually running their fucking crime ring, you know. It's mm. like, oh, fuck. No one wants to be told that. It's terrifying. And it means everything you've believed in your life is a lie, yeah. right? And it's also very hard for them to take that on board because it, it does involve a massive conspiracy. 
It, in, in reality, it doesn't. It actually involves a small conspiracy at the top. It's really how it works. Mm. They don't all have to be in on it, but they need the people at the top to be corrupt. Mm. And there's lots of evidence that. But that's kind of, I think you've nailed what's the root of their kind of anger and their, their, their closed mindedness is because you are threatening their entire being by saying, you know what, the, the World Health Organization is corrupt or that they've released this deliberately. Because they go, what are you saying? All these people I reveal, these scientists, they're all in on it. You know, mm. oh, shut up, you idiot. You know, and, and then they need to point out that they maybe are when you point out that they're all financially linked to Gates and people. They get even more angry because now you're actually trying to prove you're actually proving that they are. They have got it wrong. Everything they believe is wrong. And they don't, they, you know, that really, that, that's why they get angry. And, and that's mm. why they get angry when you give them a, a solution. And you often see them get angry. They go, hang on, what, what have I triggered here? Why are you angry? Because I'm suggesting mm. a treatment. Mm. And it's because you're threatening their worldview. You're threatening them as a human being. You're threatening everything they believe and were sure of and have been telling everyone else for their entire lifetime. And it's like, you know what? You got it wrong. Everything yep. you believe is wrong. Yep. That's why the scientific establishment kills Galileo or, or locks them up or, or whatever, and all these people. But why, why would they do that to scientists? Why would they kill them? Why would they arrest them? It's because they, they, they basically went to all the other scientists and said, you know what, you know, they Darwin, you know, you know the, 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 all, all the guys who come up with groundbreaking theories, they all went through hell pretty much from the other scientists. You think, but I thought science was all about knowledge and, you know, finding the truth. Like, no, they gave them hell because they threatened them. They, they basically, you know, Darwin came along and he, the guy before him, Lamarck, he basically made, Lamarck was the genius who everyone revered, right, before Darwin. And then Lamarck said, uh, Darwin came along and said, you know what, Lamarck, you overlooked something. You were completely wrong. And suddenly mm -hmm. Lamarck goes, oh shit, now I'm a fucking failure. Now I've gone from being a genius to being a complete laughable failure. And anyone who believed in me is also now a laughable failure. Mm. And so they, they rally around each other and go, no, no, Darwin's wrong. We can't have Darwin be pretty right. They don't care about the facts. They care about their own egos, their own living, their, 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 their livelihoods, the fact they're respected and whatever. And so that's what they're really protecting. And there's so much that going on here. You know, they're, they're protecting their fucking egos. They're protecting their careers. Mm. And, and that's why they're not really interested in it, because you're, you're touching a nerve there. Mm. Especially so, if it's someone like you, right, who's not medically qualified, and you, you're a musician, and you're showing them that, right? That's really humiliating for them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get that. <laughs> you're like the little boy who said, you know, the emperor's got no clothes. You know, it's like that. They, the last thing they want is it from you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, mm. you fucking, who the fuck do you think he is? This fucking musician telling me this. So they secretly hate you. <laughs> Yeah, they really fucking don't like it coming from that. So yeah, that's why we get a lot of shit. <laughs> um, yeah, and um, what else was I going to say? Yeah, I mean, one one of the things you touched on in that, that song of yours was um, the mental health problems. Yeah, because they didn't give a shit about either, did they? What well, someone told me about someone that they know felt so lonely they jumped up from a window but at the risk of sounding heartless they should have just stuck it out like me and the wife did i love the lockdown we're living la vida lockdown i love the lockdown we're living la vida lockdown hey -ha! It's been a year since they put us in the lockdown They've laid me off and things are not quite so good now The wife moved in with Jack from next door She cast and slashed her wrists and can't take her no more I hate the lockdown, the bleeding fucking lockdown I hate the lockdown, will it ever fucking end now? Hey! There's... One of the things that has baffled me is that people don't seem to accept the negative uh, Im implication of, of being on house arrest and social distancing um, because, like, because I'm single and when I, lived, when I lived in London as a musician, I used to do my gigs on Friday and Saturday. And then when I used to get home, I used to go out about one in the morning on my own and just go to the underworld in Camden and just kind of talk to strangers a lot of the time. I mean... Yeah, that was a big part of my social life was just talked was kind of going out on my own uh, for for you know a few years, and so so I instantly when I heard about social distancing I instantly was like whoa this is going to be awful this is this is yeah. never gonna this is it, never gonna it's work torture. it's torture yeah and yeah. and then I was like and I, I don't really suffer bad mental health problems but I I could see this is going to be really bad and then yeah. and like but pe people who have like who are married and 
um, who are, who kind of have a more close knit group of friends, they don't seem to see that because they think, oh, just hang about with your friends, you'll be all right. You don't need yeah, you, don't, you yeah. don't need to talk to strangers. But did but you? You can't even talk to hang out with your friends. I mean, I I, I live on my own. My girlfriend right. lives in another county, oh, really? and I went through three months. First first three months, if I was, it was illegal for me to see my girlfriend technically, and I couldn't travel either. So even even if I broke the law, it wasn't really possible because of the, they shut down most of the transport. I can't even remember exactly all of it. But, but in effect, I spent the first three months of the the lockdown pretty much in a room on my own. Three months. Now, really? that's pretty much solitary confinement. Yeah. I had one friend who's local who I used to run into in the supermarket, which we'd meet about once a week, sort of, sort of illegally, technically. We'd shop together. Um, and I fucking nearly, yeah, I mean, and I'm pretty balanced compared to most people, you know, an independent. Uh, and I was struggling to keep it together at times. It's like, man, this is fucking hellish. It's mm. a known torture technique. So, mm. so you know, uh, solitary confinement is is the worst of the law. It's worse than being in fucking prison. It's putting taking you into a fucking a cell on your own. And they did that to an entire nation for months. I didn't even tell them whether they're going to get out get out at any point. It's like you don't think that's going to affect mental health. You mm. fucking brutal fucking morons. And no one talked about it. Did you see the Guardian talk about it? Mm. The garden is who just before the epidemic spent fucking every day. We must be more mental health awareness. We need everyone needs to be aware of the, the pain of mental health. We must get spread awareness. And suddenly do the most bit the most brutal fucking thing to feel is mental health. And I I you know I'm lucky, you know, I've got lots of fucking things that are great in my life in terms of I have a network, you know, family and you know. Uh but there's people who live in isolation in little fucking council flats, or they have one baby or five fucking kids running around in a flat and they've got no father figure or whatever. And they've got to go through that on their own, you know, or, or little old ladies got, you know, it's like, Christ, what it must have been like for them. I can only fucking imagine. It's fucking hell. And they put through mm. the, the whole fucking country through that. And then and because all the garden reads all have fucking big gardens and they all fucking, oh, well, don't, you'll be all right. You'll be fine. You know, it's like, you heartless fucking ignorant cunts. You've got no concept of what it's like to live in a fucking council block or to have neighbours blasting out fucking some music you can't stand throughout the day, which a friend of mine has to deal with you know, day and night, you know, it's hell, it's fucking hell, and they did that, and then the kids have to deal with it, it's not just adults, and and then they just throw, we'll just go back into lockdown, they'll just do it again, you know, no problem, you know, just sit down, or what, you know, you condescending fucking heartless bastards for, for, for inflicting that on the fucking nation, and not not giving a fly fight, so it's basically the guardian, like I said, after all the lectures and all the fucking Facebook posts I've seen about, oh, I'm spreading mental health awareness, you know, I've got a little fucking thing on my, 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 Facebook fucking icon or whatever you call it, avatar about, you know, how I care about fucking some disease that, you know, um, you know, you know, you didn't give a flying fuck when it actually happened. Those people are utter hypocrites. It's just monstrous is what they did. Even Boris Johnson said that at the very beginning of the lockdown. said It's only going to be going to have a very short one because if we do it for much longer, people won't be able to stick to the rules. He said that at the beginning. He said that's why it's going to be three weeks. It's like they knew darn well that people can't take this. You know, and they, they fucking, then they just roll it out for months on end. And then they go, well, you know, deal with it. You know, it's like fucking hell. Anyone who supported that, I don't know what you're thinking. The one that really bothered me was, um, you know, when they said, look, I think it was around uh, early December, they went, let's all pull together. And if we all social distance for December, we'll all be able to hang out on Christmas Day. Do you remember yeah. that? And then, on, and then yeah. I think it was, and then on Christmas Eve, they were like, actually, don't, don't hang out with anyone on Christmas Day. And I'm, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm, that was... Yeah, and I remember Boris Johnson Christmas. said it'd be barbaric. I think he said it, to cancel Christmas would be barbaric. I think it's his own words. A week before he cancelled it, so he called it barbaric, or in, inhumane. I think inhumane. I think it's like, yeah, you know, it's inhumane. We all agreed it's inhumane. And what do you do? You go and do it. So you did something you knew was inhumane. Well mm. done. Did it? Did it, did it solve anything? It didn't make a fucking damn bit of difference either. Mm. I mean, it, you know, you've got to wonder what's going on here, and and it's. It's either grossly irresponsible or it's deliberate. And I think it's fucking deliberate. They're trying think, to grind yeah, us yeah. down. I, I said it at the very beginning. They're trying to grind everyone down psychologically, financially, um, physically. You know, that was the aim from the very beginning. And like I said, I called that out on our podcast like within about sort of a month or so. I said, I think this is what they're going to do. I'm really scared, but I have, a, I have a horrible feeling we're in for a fucking three year war here, basically. They're mm. going to sort of, it's Palestine, you know, it's that scenario. You're trying to, you just, you brutalize them and you do it on every fucking front until they take your fucking vax, which is the real fucking, and then they accept your immunity passports because you're so broken, you'll fucking take anything at that point. And I just sort of thought, you know what, I think that's what they're planning. And look at, lo and behold, you know, where are we? 
you know. Now, it's like we've got hardly any deaths, but we're still fucking facing lockdown at any moment. There's fucking guillotine that could come down at any fucking second. So, you know, the economy is going to fuck. So that's going to crash very soon. Inflation's rising. We're going to probably have food shortages. You know, this is just the fucking beginning, Fred. And, you know, for what? Did it didn't work. Sweden beat us and they didn't even have a lockdown. Mm. Sweden beat us. It has, you know, without any lockdown. So what do we achieve? Nothing. All this for nothing. We achieve nothing. And, and nothing. The, thing, the thing is, like, a lot, a lot of these people who argue against me, they admit that it's incompetence, but then they say things like, well, they, we didn't lock down early enough. And yeah. Just yeah. these... these no, no. It, like, if we only would have locked down a few weeks earlier, this would all have been... Well, fine. one, they didn't want that. Who was calling for that then? No one. They were they were objecting to lockdown. When when the lockdowns came in, they said, no, this is we can't have that. We, we believe in open borders. You know, we, They were calling people Nazis about, about a month before. Anyone who objected to open borders were Nazis. Well, when, when, when Trump uh, shut down with China, you, you had the mayor of uh, Florence saying, hug a Chinese person. They were against shutting down. No one was calling for it. Labour wasn't saying, let's shut down. No one wanted to shut down. Boris did it against the will of almost everyone. And now they go, well, you know, we should have just shut down earlier. It's like, you didn't want to shut down. Well, why, why, why? And, and even if we had shut down earlier, the virus was already in the country like months before. We now know it's probably there here in 2019. So it wouldn't have made any fucking difference. No one wanted it. No one was calling for it. But you say we should have done it. And it, what, what difference would it have made? Say we shut down then, if we'd done it. So what, we hear achieved zero COVID. Then what? Mm. We just stay shut down. How do we stop it coming back Mm. it's going to come back in the moment we open up isn't it so what do we do we stay closed down but how long is that going to last how long do you think your economy is going to survive with no, nothing coming in and, I, and, you, and how are you going to really stop anyone coming in when you've got fucking open borders all around anyway it's, of course it's going to come back in it's like fucking expecting the fucking to stop raining by putting up a fucking umbrella around it you know it's like it, it's just like you are so fucking stupid if you think that's going to be some kind of long term strategy and even China they've got it back at the moment you know, look at Australia, they locked down, or New Zealand, they're all bad. You know, they, they tried to go for zero COVID. What happened? They're still in lockdown and two years later, a year and a half, a year later. Delta has been called a game changer, and it is. It means we need to again go hard and early to stop the spread. We have seen what can happen elsewhere if we fail to get on top of it. We only get one chance. That's why Cabinet has met this afternoon and made the decision that New Zealand will move to alert level four from 11.59 p.m. tonight. Level four will be for initial period of three days, except for Auckland and the Coromandel Peninsula, who we anticipate will likely be at level four for seven days, due to them being most closely linked to our current case. I want to assure New Zealand that we have planned for this eventuality, and that we will now be putting in place that plan to contain and stamp out COVID-19 once again. Going hard and early has worked for us before. While we know that Delta is a more dangerous enemy to combat, the same actions that overcame the virus last year can be applied to beat it again. It's been utterly stupid. They've got no fucking common sense. And they and you ask them these questions, they won't answer. They'll just go, Whoa. And change the subject and then they'll repeat the same arguments the next sap you know the next day they you know they're just utterly stupid if they think that's realistic yeah i can't believe how anyone with a fucking iq over 100 would fucking think that's you know it's amazing and astonishing these people who are well educated come out with these comments oh we should have just locked down earlier mm. that would have solved it sure yeah 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 and we've got the vaccine passports coming in now and about about a year ago, that was a conspiracy theory. Yeah. And, and, and now it's not only not a conspiracy theory, if you're against it, you're a conspiracy theorist. Yeah. So that's, that, that's the kind of thing that I, I'm, get, I'm getting shit for that. I'm saying, I'm get, I'm saying yeah. guys, I, are, you, are you really saying that you don't, you don't want to be in the same venue as me anymore? Is that what you're seriously yeah, saying? Yeah. And, and, and people are like, yes. Yeah. People are actually saying yeah. that. And I'm like, so what do you expect yeah. me to do? And they're like, I suppose, Just like, you know, do you think, would you, would you be happy if we were putting camps? Would that make you happier? Because we're, that's the only thing left now is camps. You know, camps. Well, what, you know, it's like, this is exactly, you know, how, you know, a, a certain fucking group of people were treated in fucking Germany in the 1930s. The only difference is fucking camps. That's 
how far that, that's the only difference now do you, do they not realize what they're fucking doing what they're actually doing? it's astonishing i can't believe these people could call themselves liberals it's just unbelievable it's like how they've been brainwashed and they think they're fucking independent thinkers these people said that was horrific months ago they first of all said it was a conspiracy theory it would never happen oh was put on your tinfoil hat you fucking whatever they abused us for saying this was coming and then when it does come they support it you know these people don't they, they, they are basically hypnotized they're brainwashed they're going on with group things these it's, it's astonishing i mean they they, they 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 shouldn't be allowed off the hook for saying this kind of stuff they are supporting fucking tyranny apart from being actually horrendous like this is going to solve it yeah by 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 making us stand outside and not be allowed food or going to venues you think that's going to get rid of it do you or what, what what's it going to actually achieve mm. you know when your when vaccine doesn't even stop you getting it or stop you transmitting it how what, what are you going to result in when you when you when you've ostracized us and thrown us in camps or or, 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 or reduced us to subhuman level what are, you, what are you actually going to get from that you think that the virus is going to go away you'll all be fine you think you're going to open up again? What's what, what's your plan? And they've got none. They're just going along with the crowd. That's all they're doing. They're just going along with whatever they're told everyone else is going on. Like a bunch of sheep all following the other sheep's fucking tail. It's sort of circled. It's all going round and round. Bar, bar, you know, like fucking, you know, what the fuck? Where's your fucking brain? They don't have one. They don't think. They just parrot. They just, you know, it's astonishing, these people. So, so do, you, do you think we're, we're witnessing exactly the same pattern? we've seen before in so many times in history when, when tyranny has happened we're, we're repeating it and these same people were the ones who'd go never again you know before when when it'd be sort of <clears throat> some anniversary of some of the holocaust or whatever they'd all put little signs up on their facebook page going never again i stand against racism i stand against discrimination and look how they behave like fucking monsters mm. And musicians doing it as well you know you know about fucking bruce springsteen and fucking yeah Foo fucking fighters you know, yeah. you know, you're doing it. Bruce fucking Springsteen is doing a segregated gig in mm. New York. What the mm. fuck is he thinking? Mm. Does that not ring any bells? Mm. I, 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 I see it. Like, you know, what's his name? Jordan, yeah. Pe Jordan, Jordan. Peterson. Yeah. So I, yeah. Jordan Peterson, yeah. I thought, was like one of my favorite critical thinkers. Right. And he did like this hour long interview and he answered all these different questions really, really well. And then the last question was. Are you pro? Are you for or against the vaccine? And he said, "Oh, I'm for it." And they asked him why, and he said, "Oh, because I, I I I took it because I wanted to get out of lockdown." And that was his answer. Jordan Peterson. Yeah, it's like, that's I, like my response to this is to suspend judgment for six months, for, for six months from now. Fearing as I do the loss of civil liberties and being wary as I am about what it means for how we're going to handle infectious disease in the future. Um, where, you know, I'm wearing the masks when I'm required to. So that's the best I can do with that. I have no particular insight with regards to this pandemic. It affected me and my family in the same way it affects everyone else. It throws us into psychological disarray. In, in all the same ways and brings up all the same moral questions. And I wish I had a better answer, but I don't. So, I mean, I've got the vaccine. So that's par a partial answer on my part. But I understand the position of those who don't want to take it. And I would be unwilling to compel them by force, that's for sure, because that's not the right approach. Although I would encourage people to get the damn vaccine and get let's get the hell over this that's but i did that i put my body on the line to do it that's my decision i'm not saying it's right it's what i decided to do so he has taken the jab and says take the damn vaccine and get this the hell over with but he doesn't want to force people he doesn't think mandatory injections are necessary but get the damn vaccines and let's get this over with. Now, this is supposedly a very intelligent person who analyzes concepts and philosophies and ideals, you know, everything in great detail. And he says he has no insight into the pandemic situation. He's all confused and just follows the mainstream mantra of get the jab and let's get back to normal. So I take it, Jordan, yeah? I take it you're right with children getting the mRNA gene therapy injection that is not approved and is still in trial until 2023. You are okay with that, are you? You're okay with kids getting an injection that has not been had or not had any long-term testing. 
You know, just get the damn vaccine, he says. Even though kids are 99.997% safe, even if they were to get the virus, as the boffin scientist statistics tell us. And, and Jordan, if you've got no opinion on the vaccine passports being implemented, all of a sudden, all around the world, by all of the governments, all at the same time. In response to the pandemic, the EU announcing a digital ID passport yesterday, the 24-7 surveillance, the cashless currencies currently being pushed by governments all over the world. You didn't notice any of that happening in coordination with the jab rollout, no? You not notice that, Jordan, that pass you by, you got no insight into that. You and your great big brain didn't notice the huge numbers in regards to adverse effects and deaths around the world caused by the jab. 12,000 deaths in Europe, 5,000 in the USA. No, nobody run those figures by you. In the last four months, there have been more vaccine deaths than in the 15 year period between 1997 and 2012. More deaths by vaccines in the last four months than 15 years of vaccine deaths between 1997 and 2012. So does that figure not bother you a little bit, Jordan? No? This all passed you by? You got no insight into that either? No, Jordan? And it's like that and that and that is why I, I, I just I'm, it's getting really, really dangerous because people like him is like he, he I would have thought yeah. he would he, he would have something to say about this, but he's not. He's not said anything about it. Yeah, there's a lot of people you think would have something to say about it. I mean, Charlie Brooker, you know, who wrote Black Mirror, you know, you know, we're, we're living Black Mirror now. I, you know, if someone like him or Stephen Fry, these people that have a lot of influence, you know, they could come out and say, you know what, this is terrible. We're repeating the, all the mistakes of, the, of history. And if Stephen Fry said that, people, it would be, people would listen to Stephen Fry because they respect him, they like him. You know, or Charlie Brooker or, or tons of other people who, who respect him as being clever and decent people. Why aren't they saying anything? Have they got nothing to say? This, you know, look at what, what this, this unprecedented situation in history with all this fucking effect on mental illness. You know, again, Stephen Fry has told us about mental illness, how we need to be aware of it, you know, throughout his whole life, you know, how we need to be more sensitive to it. Well, you know, we've got the biggest fucking effect on childhood fucking mental illness right now. And, and God knows what. He's got nothing to say. They've all got nothing to say suddenly. What the mm -hmm. fuck are they thinking? You know, they could turn this around if they got together. If enough artists together and said, you know, we're not playing this fucking bullshit. You know, we get that we're worried. We get people worried, but we don't we don't resort to anything. We don't discriminate and just say, right, we'll treat them like they're unclean. You know, what about my body, my choice, which you were also fucking promoting a few fucking year or two back? You know, does it, do I not have any fucking choice over my own fucking body? Isn't that meant to be my sacrosanct fucking right that mm. I decide what goes into my body? Just like I decide whether I, I get an R, a fucking dick up my ass or not. It's my decision, isn't it? <laughs> It's not fucking Boris Johnson's fucking right. It's not your right. It's my right. It's their right. Everyone's right over their own body. This is fucking the basis of fucking... We've got, no one questioned that a year and a half ago or even six months ago. And now suddenly they're all going, well, I'm not so sure now. You know, I think, you know, uh, there's a possibility I might be slightly at risk, you know, by you not taking your vax. That doesn't work anyway. But anyway, I think, uh, yeah, I should. I, you shouldn't be allowed in society, you know, unless you do what I tell you. Like, fuck me. We went from that in six months. Well done. Mm. And Bruce Springsteen and, and uh, you know, they're not stupid people either. You know, mm. what they, you know, what the fuck? Were they bribed? Were they threatened? I don't fucking know, but it's fucking weird. Well, do you, I mean, do you have any um, hope that, say, say if we go into more lockdowns in the winter and say if, say if, say if people start dying from the jobs, do, do, you, do you have some hope that people will wake up at that point? I think people are starting to wake up to an extent. I think quite a lot of people are hearing about the adverse reactions because, I mean, I know several personally. Uh, and, and now they're trying to roll them out to kids. That has a big effect on, on women. There's a few things that, 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 that are kind of coming, I think, that are going to be interesting, to say the least. Mm. Um, I mean, they just got the jab passport, the vaccine passport just rolled out in New York today, I think. I think it came in. Now, they've got a big problem because the, well, the lowest uptake of all, I think, is well one one younger people because they fucking rightly so they know that they're very low risk of, of, of dying of covid and at high, you know they, they could get heart disease all sorts of problems from taking the jab so it's really insane for them to be just giving it to them um, but the other low uh, uptake is among black people and certain other i think there's a couple of other minorities but i think in new york it's something like only 27 percent of black people especially young black people have taken the jab or want to take the jab 
Um, now you're going to have some really interesting problems coming up there because you could you could have real segregation, like not just segregation, but racial segregation <laughs> coming back to New York, where you actually have a situation where, you know, a group of black guys come into a, a venue and you, ha- and you find out that half of them aren't jabbed and you have to turn away 10 black people or make them sit outside. <laughs> and you, you can actually see that the black people are made to sit outside or can't go to gigs or, you know, mm. or, or, you know, you can't get enough people to go. To, say if you have a, a, a black art, artist who's got a predominantly black audience it won't be financially viable for them to play new york because <clears throat> most of the people their audience won't be allowed to go and see them mm. um so so they're not gonna have any entertainment <laughs> mm. and then they're gonna be made to eat outside <laughs> you know you get in new york this this so-called liberal mecca or whatever they think like think they are mm. um that's gonna be kind of interesting <laughs> to see, see how black lives matter react to that i mean i really hope for once they actually you know, they could do something really, really positive here and actually say, you know, and make a stand against this. Say, listen, you know, mm. um, I th- yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things. And like I say, I think people are waking up because they're hearing people having vaccine injuries. A lot of them have had some kind of reaction to taking it, even if it's not like massive, but they've often felt shit for a few days. And I think a lot of people might, they took it once, they might take it twice, but they don't want to keep on taking the boosters and all their stuff. Mm. So again, I think that's waking people up. They're starting to go, hey, what? but I now take a booster. I didn't really like taking the vax and I only took it to go on holiday uh, and I didn't even get my holiday. And now I've got to take a booster. Well, will I get my holiday now? Mm. I, I, you know, there's no guarantee, is there? And so they've got a kind of range of problems. And I think people are sort of waking up here and there and sort of, you know, they're kind of starting to go, this is a bit funny, isn't it? I'm not really sure, I'm not happy about what's going on. Mm. But they haven't put things together and made whatever join the dots to really understand what's really going on but you know it, they, i think that people are starting to wake up that, to the idea that something's not right and they're not happy with it all and they don't really want to keep on taking these jabs uh, mm. i think that's starting to happen so i don't know how that's going to play out because if the cabal you know want to keep on forcing it and even if you introduce vax passports how are you actually going to do that have you got to take every booster shot to, to you know what happens if you take two of the two of the vaxes but not the booster are you allowed into society mm. I you just know, ne- I, I never that's, under- that's gonna be hard. I never understood I don't know anything about vaccines, right? But I never I thought a vaccine you were supposed to get a bit of the dead pathogen in the vaccine and then and then and then because that is because you get the pathogen, then if you get the real thing, then you um then your body recognizes it. That was You've my understanding. Got antibodies. But it did, all this stuff yeah. with boosters yeah, and boosters and that just doesn't make sense to be boosting up. What you what are they boosting? What's up with? I don't. I don't even. Well, go- uh, it's it. Well, it's. Uh, <laughs> well, because it's a different technology. It's, it's not based on the on the, the the dead pathogen stuff. Um, they're 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 using the spike proteins. I, I don't even understand it, but it's a completely different technology, and it's it's so that's part of the problem. Plus, they didn't do any fucking trials. If you look into the trials, they're a fucking joke. Um, so. I mean, I think they do wear off, you know, but some vaccines can wear off over time. But yeah, for one to barely last a few months, it's a pretty shit vaccine at best. I mean, I can't remember any vaccine that you have to take. Well, even two boosts, maybe maybe sometimes you have to take two, but you didn't have to boost them every three months or something. So uh, it's crazy, really. And and because you have to boost it, it also proves that it's never going to get rid of COVID because Mm. how are you going to make that? If you've got to keep it, that means not only have you got to vaccinate 7 billion people, but you've got to vaccinate them every three months, <laughs> uh, you know, and then it still doesn't stop you getting your party it on. It's, there's just no way the vaccine is going to ever get you out of it. It's just so obvious that it, it, you know, it's just completely unworkable. It it's useless and it has mo- tons of side effects. Yeah. Uh, God, we've been talking for an hour now, mate. Um, this is so it, yeah. I, guess, I guess we'll try and bring it to a kind of a close. I, w- I wanted to ask you how this has affected you as a as a musician. Were you, were, is, was your, is all your income coming from uh, being a, a musician? No, it's not. No, I mean, luckily I have my own place. I belong to my uncle, so I'm kind of fortunate on that front. I'm in a very oh. luxurious position at the moment, um, which gives me, although I'm completely fucked by the furlough, because obviously I've got nothing from there. Um, it's really fucked me over because I've just put together a new band that I really was happy with. We did one gig. I mean, it's taken ages to, to sort out and find the players and rehearse up. We did our first gig, then the lockdown happened. I haven't seen them since for a year and a half now. Mm. Uh, you know, I, so I can't play, I can't do anything. My whole livelihood's gone. Uh, my whole, you know, my, my existence, my whole reason for being is gone. And I can't um, 
there's no sort of it looks like I may never be able to play I'll be allowed in clubs again so it's over for me he, mm-hmm. you know if I'm not allowed in clubs I can't play in clubs mm-hmm. so basically for what you know it's not going to you know, as we know it's not going to save anything so I've basically been told I'm you know my life's over really mm-hmm. as, as an artist what am I supposed to do I mean I can record which I've been doing that's the only thing I've been doing I'm mostly on my own although I've got you know a couple of people who, whatever but you know it, it's and that must have been must be happening to tons of bands as well I don't know I don't know what, because you know, if you've got a four-piece band, it's quite likely that at least one member doesn't want to take the fucking jam. Mm. Um, so what they're gonna do to sack them. Uh, and do they want to be playing to segregated gigs? I don't fucking know. I wouldn't want to, even if I'd taken the jab, I wouldn't want to mm. be playing to only people taking it. It's like apartheid. I don't want I don't want to be doing that. Mm. Um, so you know, I feel like I'm fucked. I, I don't really don't know what the fuck I'm supposed to do now. Mm. I mean, I spent my entire life basically around being a musician. I moved to London to be a musician to form a band. It's all I've ever wanted to do. I've hundreds of songs fucking you know thought into music and and now it's like they just come along and said fuck you it's over for you you mm. might they might as well fucking put a gun to my mm. i mean it's, it's i don't really know what to do i don't even know how long i can survive mentally it's 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 every day i feel absolutely wake up with dread in my stomach and go to bed with dread in my stomach now pretty much because mm. i just go i don't even know if i'm like, gonna have a, an existence it's either that or i take this fucking jab Mm. You know, and and hope that I don't end up like Eric Clapton and unable to play guitar. How are you about this? Have you taken the jab? And can I ask? I mean, I don't. Absolutely not. I I I would never do it. I would never never do it because um. Hello. Yeah. Um. I, I'm never going to take it. They'd have to put a gun to my head uh, before yeah, they yeah. got me to take that jab. And it, and it's not just it's not just the fact that um. I, I think they're dangerous. I, I think I'd lose all my personal integrity if I if I took yeah. That. Yeah. It's like someone saying, you know, I'll let you out of the house if you let me fuck you up the arse, you know. Mm, or or like you see even a girl, or, or so have, a, have a drink. Of, do, you, do you want a drink? You know, well, I'm not really, you know. Well, if you don't have this drink, I'm going to not let you out of the house. He's like, you mm. might have had one before. But once someone tells you, you've got, you go, no, 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 no. You, now you're, def- you're denying me my basic right as a human being to have the, this choice. When you do that, I, I can't do it because, it's, you know, you're basically telling me I'm your gimp. You know, mm. and that alone is, is why I don't want to take. Mm. Yeah. And it's just morally wrong. And, and so, yeah, apart from anything else, I don't want to fucking do it. So, uh, you know, it, it's just so, it's like, I feel like I'm violated. I'm being raped, really, literally being raped. Mm. I'm being raped because I, cause, cause you're making me do it. Mm. You're not giving me that choice. And that's basically the same as rape, as, as far as I'm concerned. There isn't a difference. Once you deny me my choice over what goes into my own body, you're raping me effectively mm. physically you know and you, you know and and apart from all the other risks so it's like yeah i do not want to fucking take it mm. and now i've got to decide between that being raped effectively or give up music which is the whole reason i get up in the morning mm. afternoon uh you know it's <laughs> what a fucking what a fucking choice you've given me thanks a lot guys yeah. you know you 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 will let you do what you do if you, we stick this in your fucking arm mm. for a virus that I'm already protected against because I take vitamin D and I'm I'm probably healthier than them. So oh. it's unbelievable we're facing this decision. I'll ask you one more question, then we'll, we'll call it a afternoon. Um, what what are you doing to prepare for the next six months? Because I um I I never thought I'd do this, but I, do you know what I've just done? I've just bought a six month supply of food. Well, and I've, and I've bought a generator. <laughs> really? A fucking generator. Uh, just because I... Well, I, I, you might be wise. You might be very wise. You might have done really one of the most sensible things there. We don't fucking know. But yeah, I could see them cutting off. I could see power cuts and all sorts of things. And they'll blame it on COVID and all sorts of things. Cyber attacks are you know, being mentioned. When they mention something, it's very likely that that means that it's, they're doing it. Um <clears throat> Yeah, I, I, to be honest, I've been trying to think about getting out of out of the city, trying to move somewhere else that's safe uh, or just free. Uh, I, I've been looking into options. Almost all my friends have been looking into options. It's amazing that we're actually having these discussions. I mean, literally, like these are really intelligent people. These aren't whack jobs that I'm talking about. These are, these are friends who've got fucking degrees and very, very sharp, some of the highest IQ people I know. They're all looking into other countries they can move into, move to, even buying a plot of land to m- live in a caravan. The very fact they're literally researching this 
going that far. They're not just talking about it. They're actually inquiring about it, looking at prices and stuff. It's like, my God, we're in England. I'm mean, using the word escape. I've heard lots of people say we need to escape. Do about escape. The word escape mm. applying to London and England. Mm. Seriously, without any irony. It's like, mm. my God, that's what we're living in now. People, mm. intelligent people saying, I need to, I'm wondering about escape. And, mm. and people and other people say, oh, life's fine. It's amazing. You know, their heads are so in the sand about this. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, honestly, I've been looking into, into getting the fuck out. And I don't know where to go, which is the other problem. Like, where the fuck do you go? You know, everywhere's, you know. Uh, going to the same shit except for Sweden and you know. so no, yeah I, I don't I, fucking know but I'm, I'm I, looking into it I, I, I thought I thought about moving to Mexico but I recently yeah friends of you, mine are talking, discussing Mexico two friends of mine are talking about Mexico yeah you, you know um, these stand in the park events yeah it's like I, I currently live in Leeds and um, I've been meeting these these kind of groups and stand in the park and there's people there who are literally talking about buying a piece of land on the outskirts of Yorkshire, yeah. getting about 20 people together yeah. and, and just living off grid. And that people yeah. are li- literally planning this stuff and like, and yeah. like just finding ways to, and like you would no internet. It would be no, no, you know, have to, to get, get your own. Literally it'd be like going back to caveman times. And this is what yeah. pe- people are discussing. And I, I, I was talking to them like, can I be part of this? If things get really bad. And I'd never thought I'd ever be having I know. discussions like this. And this is what people are talking about. But then, Whilst I'm having conversations like that, it seems like everyone else just thinks that we're going back to normal. And yeah, maybe maybe we will. Maybe we will go back to normal, but I don't think so. Yeah, well, the, basically, I mean, you've called it right. I've called it right since the beginning. You know, they said, "Oh, we'll be back to normal by summer." I've heard this all along. So I, I told you, no fucking way. You don't get it. You don't see what's really going on here. And I've called it right all along, basically. You it sounds like you have loads of these people that were they all your friends you're talking about. They probably all called it right so you know it's very likely that they're calling it right here as well um yeah i don't think we're getting back to normal <laughs> i bet almost anything on that anyone wants to fucking take a bet with me i'll fucking do it uh yeah we're not going back to normal um but whether or not we'll have to you know be in a in a tent or whatever i don't know i hope i hope we can survive that but it's a fucking realistic possibility i'm talking about moving to fucking uh, 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 an island i've been looking into like i mean I, 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 off fucking scotland this kind of shit i fucking hate the idea but it, it might be like safe. And that's, I'm thinking about this shit as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, we see what's coming. We, we can sense it in the air. It's pretty, you know. Once you once you're sort of saying you can't exist, you can't go into supermarkets, you know, and they're actually discussing that. Well, yeah, it's pretty sensible to say, you know, it might be time to get the fuck out. Mm-hmm. You know, the people who escaped Nazi Germany, but the, the ones who survived it, the ones who got out, I bet mm-hmm. they were laughed at at the time. But now we think they're the sensible ones. Mm. All right, mate. Well, I, guess, I guess we'll leave it there. On that happy note. Uh, yeah. Thanks for being so honest. Uh, and I think I think a lot of people watching this will resonate with how passionate you are because I I almost feel like people. Yeah, are gas, I gas used to be so miserable. I, I mean, when we start when we started doing the podcast, they were all upbeat and funny. We used to mm. joke around and laugh about, oh, what is this? this? Right, revelation time. We we joked about it, but there's always a bit in my head was going, you know what, it might be, and. The reason we stopped doing the podcast was because we both got so dark about it. I thought, I don't know if I'm really helping anyone. I, you know, I want to lift people up. I want to be funny and, you know, say, you know, we can beat this, whatever. But mm. I'm, I'm now faced after all this kind of time going, you know what, it might be safer to fucking be, you know, to cover your fucking asses at this point. And, mm. you know, so that's why we stopped doing them. But, you know, you know, it, it, it's worth looking into and forming communities, forming networks with people that you get on with and safe and you can trust. You know, that might be a sensible move right now. I hate to mm. say it. I hate to be so bleak, but, you know, mm. what could you do? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm but, off, um, I'm, no, I, I, I mean, I'm off, I'm off yeah, to the, so, uh, the, I'm I'll, off to I'll the protest. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm off to the protest oh, a, week yeah. on, a week on Saturday in London, so maybe I'll see you there. Yeah, I, I, I hopefully will be there. Yeah, yeah, mm. I intend to. Um, well, look, it's really good talking. Sorry for being so fucking miserable. No, I thought it was great. And um, ho- I hope we can connect sometime in the future too, you know, whether it's a gig yeah, or whatever. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, if we can do a gig, it'd be great. You know, I mean, yeah, I mentioned this to you before. It's, it's, I've got one gig coming up and it's, you know, that's all I've got and it's fucking all pro pre book. But it'd be great to, if, if we're allowed to, to play together at some point. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> don't, get too, don't get too down about it. <laughs> and, yeah, um, I'll try not to. I'll see you soon, mate. All right.
Thanks a lot. Cheers. Okay. Thanks See very you, much. Mate. Yeah, bye.